and welcome to 7-1 Ratios and Rates. Now today we're going to write ratios and rates and we're actually going to use what's called a unit rate to solve real world problems. Now I just want to take a couple seconds here to read this little um, picture that I found. So a ratio is a comparison of two whole numbers in the same units. Now let's underline that. That's, this is something that's really good for you to write into your notes. As you can see, we started off with inches and feet, 20 inches uh, for three feet, and then here we converted it into inches over inches, or here we have both inches. Uh, we reduced that. Now it says it's always written as two numbers. So there's three ways to write it. Three halves, three over two, like a fraction. Four with a semicolon in the middle. And using the word two, 15 to one. Never write the units, reduce to simplify. Okay, so in a ratio, we are never gonna write the units and we need to reduce to simplify it. Now this, let me tell you, is a good thing to have written in your notes. And let's look at rates. So rates would be like a mile per hour. I could also say it as feet per second. So we're going to have two different units in a rate. The number, it's going to always be written as a single number on a per unit basis. So I don't want to know I can go 300 miles, like this example up right here, I don't want to know that I can go 300 miles in five hours. I want to know my speed for every hour, per hour. I notice it also says we're always going to write the units, whereas a rate, we're never going to write the unit, units. And for rates, we're going to divide to simplify. So as you can see here, I had 300 miles per five hours. So I did, well, what's 300 divided by five? And I know that 5 goes into 36 times. Um, so we divided it to get one number and say it's 60 miles per hour. Okay, so there's a lot to take in. We're going to practice this. Just please get this written into your notes. It's really going to be great to look back at when you're taking and preparing for your test. All right, so let's use that in determining and answering some questions here. So here I have a table that's talking about uh, how many kids play violins, cellos, flutes, double reeds, clarinets, horns, viol violas, basses, trumpets, percussion, harp, the harp, and trombones. So if I'm going to write a ratio of flutes to clarinets, like it says, I need to make sure that when I put my ratio down, I have flutes number first. These are not able to do the commutative property. They have to be in order. So the number of flutes are five. Here's where I'm getting my information. So we would say five, two, clarinets, four. Now this is one way. There are three ways to write our ratios. I could also write it as five to four as a fraction. I could also write it five semicolon, or colon, sorry, five colon four. Those are my three ways to write it. Doesn't matter which one you pick. I just wanted you to know if there's a question in the book that says write this two different ways. These are our three ways. Now it says trumpets to total instruments. So trumpets, there are three, two. Now I'm going to quick add those up. When I added them up, I got 95. So then I could write it as a fraction or with a semicolon in the middle, three semicolon 95. Now remember that order is very important. I can't just flip them around because it says trumpets to total instruments. Now if I want to do total instruments, 95, two bases, nine, I'm just looking back up at my table to see where I'm getting uh, how many kids played that instrument. 95 to 9. So now here I would do an improper fraction. And then 95 
to 9. Oh, yeah, 9. And remember, when we're talking ratios, we don't do the units afterwards. We just have two numbers that we're comparing. Um, it did say to reduce if you can. So I would check, does 3 go into 95? And does, if, well, if 3 goes into 95, or if 9 goes into 95, then 3 would. 95 divided by 9, nope, we cannot. Does 95 go into 3? No, we cannot do either of those. These are reduced as far as they can go, so we're good to go. But yes, you should reduce if you can. Let's write that into our notes. Reduce if possible. Okay, let's look at a couple more examples here. Now equivalent ratios are ratios that name the same comparison. So this is basically the same as equivalent fractions. If I have the ratio 2 to 10, I could reduce it and say that's the same as 1 fifth. Or I could multiply 1 fifth both by 3 and I would get 3 fifteenths. They are all the same comparison. It's just cutting my pie into different slices, the different amount of slices. Here I cut it into 5 and 8, 1. Here I cut it into 10 and 8, 2. I'm eating the same amount, I'm just eating smaller pieces. Here I cut it into 15 slices and I'm eating 3. Um, so here it says, write three equivalent ratios to compare the number of arrows with the number of stars. Now this is trying to trick us. Arrows is coming first, but they showed us stars first. That's why we need to really make sure we're watching carefully and making sure that we follow the directions. So the number of arrows are one, two, three, four, five arrows, two, four stars. Okay, so if I want to write three equivalent ratios, I could multiply both by 2, and I could get 10 eighths. Or I could write multiply them both by 3, and I would get 15 twelfths. Or I could multiply them both by 4, and I would get 20 Oh, 20, 4 times 4 is 16, 20 sixteenths. Now equivalent ratios, like I said, is basically just finding our equivalent fractions that we've already practiced. Except for now we're looking at them as ratios of stars to air, or arrows to stars. So this will come in handy in the future, so please don't just say, oh, I already know that, don't have to pay attention. We really need to remember that, that we will use this for something else. So let's go to the next slide. Now a rate is different. A rate is going to compare two quantities that have different units of measure. We talked about that, different units. So suppose a two liter bottle of soda costs $1.98. And I am wanting to write this as a rate. Uh, my rate is going to equal the price of the soda over the number of liters. So we would say, it costs $1.98 for 2 liters. So when the comparison is to one unit, the rate is called a unit rate. Now these are terms we have to remember. These are kind of our vocabulary words. Ratio, rate, unit rate. So our unit rate is when we compare it to one. Instead of saying two liters, I'm going to say, well, how much is one liter going to cost? Now, this comes in really handy when you're at the grocery store and you're trying to figure out what's the better deal. If I buy a whole lot of soda or if I just buy a, like a, if I buy a two liter bottle of soda versus if I buy a can of soda, what's the better price, the better value per ounce? So, or in this case, liters. Um, so let's look here. The unit rate would be $1.98 per 2 liters. So I would write that like $1.98 per 2 liters. Now to figure out, I want to make my denominator equal 1. Well, if I have 2 there, that means I have to divide both sides by 2. Or sorry, the numerator and denominator by 2. So if I divide $1.98 by 2, I would get... 99 cents 
4, 2 divided by 2 would be 1 liter. So to get the unit rate, we just have to get our denominator to equal 1. We want it to equal 1. Now let's practice that. All right, so I have a 2 liter bottle of soda here. And that two liter bottle of soda is going to cost me two dollars and two cents. And then I have a three liter bottle of soda. And that's going to cost me two dollars seventy nine cents. So when you go to the store, you'd see, well, the two, three liter bottle of soda, that costs more money. But we're going to look at it, well, how much does one liter cost to figure out which one has the better value, the better deal for us. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide this by 2 and divide the numerator by 2 because I want to see, well, how much does 1 liter cost? Okay, so if I do $2.02 and two cents divided by 2, now I just need to divide this out. 2 goes into 2 one time, minus 2, I'm left with 0. Bring down my zero. Two still goes into zero, zero times. I'm going to bring up my decimal so I don't get that mixed up. They really should be right on top of each other if we're nice and neat. So I'm going to bring down my two. Two goes into two once, exactly two times. So I'm left with zero left over. So for one liter of this type, uh, for one liter in this situation, it's going to cost one dollar and one cent. Now let's look to see how much it's going to cost for one liter of this soda. And so I have to do divide by 3 because I want this to equal 1. Here it is a 2, I'm going to divide by 2. Here it is a 3, I'm going to divide by 3. So that means I need to divide my numerator by 3 as well. So I will do $2.79 divided by 3. Now, I'll bring up my decimal. Now, 3 does not go into 2. How many times does 3 go into 27? 3 goes into 27 9 times. Minus 27. Bring down my 9. 3 goes into 9 3 times. Minus 9, and we are left with nothing left over. So it costs 93 cents for 1 liter of soda. Um, if you buy the 3 liters, it will only cost you 93 cents per liter. If you buy the 2 liters, it will only cost it will cost you $1.01. One cent. So which is the better deal? The better deal is 3 liter for $2.79. That is our better deal. Now, you'd have to look at it if you're not going to drink three liters of this soda. If you don't need that much, you wouldn't buy that much. But if you're going to drink it anyways, you really want to get the better deal. Now, that is all that I have for you today. Please make sure you ask if, there, if you have any questions. and I would love to answer them. Um, but we'll see you tomorrow.